Hello, I'm going to go through a quick teaching video of how to do a cells, writs, and fermatas in your conducting music. To do an a cell whenever you're conducting, it's pretty self-explanatory. If the tempo starts at 100 beats per minute and a cells to 140, you're going to just increase your pattern as much as you need to in terms of speed until you get to that tempo in a designated number of beats. Sometimes the pattern or the directors will like you to be at a different pace or a slower pace, or sometimes they'll want you to be at a faster pace, but for right now, we're gonna do it as if it was just a gradual a cell of time. So let's say I'm starting at around 100 beats per minute, right here at 4-4. Four, four. I'm gonna gradually increase the tempo. That was around 140. So in my head, I'm thinking just a gradual increase of speed Sometimes as I'm conducting a cells, I like to kind of show it with my face that we're going faster, as an example like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one. That way my head kind of bobs a little bit to the music to give like a forward momentum to kind of foreshadow the fact that we're celling the music. A D cell or a writ looks the exact same way but in the opposite direction. So let's say I start at around 100 beats per minute and I want to writ to about 60 beats per minute. I'm going to start at a regular comfortable tempo, and then I'm gonna gradually get slower and slower, keeping the same clarity for every beat. You notice how my pattern gets a little bit bigger? You'll see this is because at a slower tempo I have more freedom to use more room of my conducting pattern. You don't always have to do this. For example, if the music decrescendos and writs at the exact same time, you can always just go smaller like this. That way, the music doesn't get drastically different in dynamics. It stays mainly the same, except with the tempo change. Sometimes you'll see an example where a tempo goes from a super fast tempo in cut time to a tempo in focal time. So we want to make sure that this is very clear whenever we're conducting. Let's say we start at around 180 beats per minute, and we want to go to 100 beats per minute. If you do this, you want to make sure that in the middle of your conducting pattern, you switch to cater to the new tempo being softer and slower than the faster one at the aggressive cut time speed. It looks like this. Switch. See how in the middle there, as the tempo decreased, I switched right in the middle to where it was a very comfortable tempo to where I could still do the regular focal tempo and not feel super frantic and wake I'm waving my arms like a bird, but it got slow enough to where it was, I was able to keep controlling the decrescendo and controlling the writ until it was a comfortable tempo. The last thing we're gonna go over is fermatas. Fermatas are pretty self-explanatory. You just add them in wherever there is one in the music, and the way I like to do them is almost exactly how you would do a regular cutoff, except you hold the note instead of having a metered release. For example, if we have a beat on one, that has a fermata and a 4-4 measure before it, it's gonna look like this. One, two, three, four, hold. And release. So what I'm doing here is I'm bringing my hands to the middle on the downbeat, holding them in this, where the back of my hands are facing the audience or the members, so they see that I'm in this holding form. I'm gonna hold it here, very obviously a fermata, and then release on one. That way I give them a very clear example of that the fact that this note is held and then I give a little head nod, show that the release is right on V1. Um, this way it's very, very clear to the members exactly where you're holding, how long you're holding, and when to release. We try and make this release as easy as possible. We don't want to make it unpredictable in any sense. For example, this is what an unpredictable release would look like after a fumata. One, two, three, four, hold, like that. We don't ever want a super, super uneven circle. We want to make sure that circle motion is as even as possible. That way, everyone knows exactly when I'm going to hit that downbeat. For example, this is what an even from auto release looks like. One, two, three, four, one. Three and off. I subdivide in my head every single time that I do a release to where it's one full beat and I hit right on one so there's no confusion there.